the heart say amen. amen. Let's do that again. Let in the heart say amen. amen. Those of you that love the Lord say amen. amen. Come on, let's give our God a hand of praise on this good Friday. Come on now, we can do a little better now. If I ask you to give me a hand of praise, that will be all right. Come on. Come on, if you know he woke you up. Come on. Come on, y'all can stand up and just bless the Lord at all. Come on, let's give God. It's good Friday. Come on, don't pity that God. Amen. Amen. We come, come on, if you come to worship him tonight. Come on. If you come to lift him up. Oh, yeah. You may be seated. Good evening. We greet you in the wonderful and the powerful and master name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the wonderful Christ. He is wonderful, isn't he? I say he is wonderful, isn't he? Amen. Every praise. Amen. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Thank you for letting God lead us this way to come and bless his name with this powerful word and inspirational word on the last seven saved. Again, as we get ready to start our program. Amen. 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 I wouldn't be in a hurry, such a hurry that I miss what God has for me. Amen. Amen. Let's give God another round of applause. Amen. Those of you who don't know me, I'm to Pastor Tim Amen. I'm the shepherd of the greater Pine Road missionary about the church of Larksley, Alabama. Amen. No matter where you come from, whether it's from the Baptist, the Holy, uh, or Methodist, whatever, we're going to have a Holy Ghost, Pentecostal, CME, AMEZ, a non denomination. Hallelujah, good time. Come on, give it up for the Lord. You want me, amen. You want it about me, and I want it about you, so we're on the same street. Come on. We're getting ready to hear from our first speaker of the night. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand as he gets ready to come in. Not in his way, but God's way. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on, now, y'all. We didn't come to sit here and act like we don't know who he is. If he knows who he is, you ought to show some kind of sign. If God done that something for you, you ought to show some kind of sign. Oh, some of y'all still sit down here tonight. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. I come to praise him. If God done that I know some of you are hard here, and I'm going to ask you one more time. Has God done anything for you? Come on, show some kind of sign. Let the redeemed of the Lord. All right, come on. I'll first speak of that. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Luke, Luke 23. Luke 23. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Upon honor, man, angel of this house, to our brethren, uh, we are grateful on this day. Uh, this is our, we are preparing for our Independence Day as the body of Christ. Right. Amen. You know, July 4th, we celebrate. June 19th, we celebrate. But we're believers and we're preparing for our Independence Day because it's, it's because of the resurrection that we are free. Amen. 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 And if, you, if you were free, if, you, if you've been blood or blood washed, you know what I'm talking about. Luke 23. Luke 23, 20, 34 says, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiments and cast lots. Amen. Amen. When we think about this text in the gospel, the, the purpose of the gospel is to proclaim the good news of what God has done in and through Jesus Christ so that the hearer could respond by repentance. We see this carried out in the second chapter of Acts. They preach the word of God and the audience asks, men and brethren, what shall we do? And on that day, 3,000 souls were added. They said, what shall we do? 3,000 souls repented, were baptized. And, and that day, the church was established. Why? Because of the shedding of the blood. And, who's, and, the, and so when, when we see this, we understand that Jesus was not just talking about 
uh, them, forgive them, those that scourged him, those that beat him. He was also talking about us. Don't well, turn to your neighbor, just know he was talking about you. When he said, forgive them, he was talking about us. Um, without the shedding of blood, there would be no repentance. So Jesus died and his blood was shed so that everyone would be afforded the same opportunity to repent, 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 repent. The main message of the Bible is that God is restoring the world to his original design through Jesus. Our world is in a state of brokenness because of mankind's rejection of God and his plan. Isaiah 53, 12 states that Jesus bore the sins of many and became and made intercession for the transgressors. Who are the transgressors? Again, it's not just, I'm going to visit Calvary, but when I look around this place, that's all of us. That's all of us. John 3, 16, 17, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that through him that we might be saved. So Jesus entered into a broken and world to die on the cross and to restore mankind back to God. Forgive them. Forgive them. Let's talk about them. Who, who is Jesus talking about forgiving? The thief, you had the two thieves on the cross who were guilty of the crimes. You had the religious leaders who were mocking him. Save yourself. He was talking about them. They're the who. The people in the crowd that sat around and watched. Now, there was no social media. Now, if there was social media, this would be all over Twitter. Yes, they didn't have all that, but they sat there and they watched. His close friends. He had a friend that denied him. Who else is this? Jesus was led like a sheep to the slaughter. The members of the Sanhedrin and the Roman soldiers, they beat him. They, 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 they pulled the beard out of, they pulled the, the hair out of his face. I'm, I'm growing this beard and it's going through some little stages, but Jesus' beard, they pulled it until, the, the Bible says that he was unrecognizable. Yeah. Mary walked up in there and didn't know who it was. She heard his voice. She had to hear his voice for her to know who this was. Yeah. So, 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 and, and, and all of this things, I mean, I can go on because I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a lot of time. But talking about how bad this situation was. But it's not just them that he died for. Yeah. Right. Crucifixion was, a horrible, was so horrible that the New International Bible states, states that only slaves and the basis of criminals and offenders uh, who were not Roman citizens were executed in this manner. But he also, that them, that includes you and I. That includes us. He knew that we would do things that we weren't supposed to do. He knew that we would turn our backs on him. Jesus, when he said, forgive them, he not just talked about those, but he talked about you and I. Yeah. And so it's important that we understand that forgiveness is a very, very difficult thing to do. Though in, a, in the Greek, the forgiveness means, it means to set free, to let go, to release, to discharge, or to liberate. Forgive them for they know not what they do. So brothers and sisters, it's important that we understand what this first message was. Forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. Can we forgive our brothers and sisters? Because if we can't forgive them, he can't forgive them. Forgive them, forgive them, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So I, I, I encourage you today to hear the word, let the word saturate, get, let the word permeate something, let the word draw you to repentance, because it's repentance, uh, it's because of the sin, it's because of the blood that was shed, that our sins can be remitted, it's because of the blood that was shed that we are forgiven of our sins. Don't just walk away from here, walk in there doing the same thing, being the same way. He wants us to be forgiven so that we can be epistles to mankind. People are looking for, people are looking for a word. People are looking for something. And it's important that we live a life that's pleasing to God so that our brothers and sisters will see what it is and who we are supposed to be. Forgive us. Jesus, forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. To the angel 
of this house, Pastor Lou, to all of these prognostic cicadas of Calvary, yes, to all the angels that are gathered here today, to all of God's children, it's just a blessing to be in the house of God one more time. Yeah. From Luke, chapter 23, verse 43, I want to back up for a moment, moment, verse 42, if you will. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Yes, sir. Verse 43, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. At the closing of our life, when we have stuck our swords in the sands of time, yeah. when we have traded in moral for immortality, for earthly, for eternal life, we all want to leave this earth having done something. Want to leave this life, leave this world, having done something in this world that would weigh and resonate on the minds of mankind forever. When we leave here, when we leave here, my sisters and my brothers, we all want to have been done something where our names yes, sir. will live on and not go down into the pits of the grave with us. Yes, sir. Yeah. We want to leave here with a page or at least a footnote yes, in history. Having accomplished or achieved something in this life. Yeah. We want to be remembered for our charitable acts. Yeah. We want to be remembered for our good deeds. We want to be remembered by our family and our friends. We want to be remembered by society. Yeah, Jesus. But most of all, most of all, when we shall go into that room mm, and not come out anymore, yes, oh. when we have to lay on nature's couch of sweet repose, uh -huh. we want to be remembered by our God. Yeah. Yes, sir. David said in the A clause of, of Psalm 6 and 5, he said, In death there is no remembrance of thee. Yeah. Which I think brings about the ideology of Psalm that when you when you're dead, you're done. Right. And some of my brothers and sisters choose to believe that everything that you have done, uh -huh. whether good or bad, uh -huh. is forgotten. But I heard granddaddy say, I heard grandmama say, may the words I've done yes, sir. Yes. speak for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, when I'm resting in my grave, yes, and there's nothing that can be said, may the words I've done yes, speak for me. Yes, sir. And then I read over in the book of Revelation where John the Revelator yes, transcribed where the Spirit told him to pin one day that we shall rest from our limbs yes, and our works well, will follow us. Yes, yeah. Meaning that after this life is over, yeah. Yeah. even when man forgets huh? what we've done, yeah. Yeah. even when man forgets our names, the Lord will still remember us. Yeah. The mere fact of the thief on the cross in his last and final moments, I'm sure that he did not want to be remembered for what he had done. Yeah. Oh. Just like the other offender hanging perpendicular and adjacent to Jesus, yes, sir. he had committed some grievous and atrocious acts. Oh. He had done some thievery and deception, yeah. which he admitted and he confessed and owned up to. You know, some of us, we do wrong and we don't want to own up to our wrongdoings. Yes, 
Yeah. You ain't got to say nothing tonight, but he admitted yeah. to his wrongdoing. Yeah. And I'm sure that he, he don't want to be remembered for the sins of omission. Yes, sir. Where he knew what was right, yeah. but failed to do it. And I'm sure he didn't want to be remembered for the sins of Ah, uh, where he acknowledged what was wrong and choose to do wrong anyway. And some of you, some of you tonight, are looking at me strange right now, and, and some of you don't want to know, Reverend. Yes, sir. If you didn't want to be remembered for what he did wrong, then what exactly did he want to be remembered for? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you asked. Because even if you didn't ask, I was going to tell you anyhow. Yeah. I got three minutes. <laughs> Man suspended on the cross on the side of Jesus. Uh -huh. uh, he wanted to be remembered for the change of heart that took place at Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. The man, the man, he wanted to be remembered for the hour and the second that he realized who the man hanging in the middle really was. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to be remembered uh, for allowing Christ to come into his life. And even in spite of his shortcomings, slip up, screw up, scandals, and stumbling blocks, he wanted the Lord to remember him and his conversion and grant him forgiveness and give him a brand new start. Oh, I think I found my answer. Here he is. He, he says unto Jesus, he said, Lord, Lord. remember me. Amen. Not my wrongdoing, not my faults, not my failures, uh, not my blunders, and not my bad decisions. Lord but Lord, I want you to remember me remember. when thou comest into thy kingdom. Oh, I'm about to mess up somebody's theology tonight, and that's all right, but... And, and no, he didn't go down into the watery grave of baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and to my church of God and Christ, my coaching folks. Uh, he didn't go down in the name of Jesus. What? Because you do realize that baptism don't save nobody. Uh, uh, somebody ought to help me out tonight. Uh, yeah, sometimes you can go down and come back up the same way. Sometimes you ain't doing nothing but taking a bath, but baptism don't save nobody. Oh, baptism is an outward sign of an inward change. Oh, but if you will watch this, because I don't want you to miss it, what did happen was that he confessed Jesus as his Lord. Yes. He accepted Jesus as the Lord of his life. Yes. And it was based upon his confession of faith. Well. Jesus put dying on Paul. Yes. Postpone the inevitable. Yeah. Opened the doors of the church. He extended the right hand of fellowship uh -huh. to this regenerated child of God. Yeah. And he said unto him this day, this day. Yeah. not tomorrow, not next week, not Sunday morning, but this day, yeah. you shall be with me in paradise. Yeah. Uh, somebody say, Reverend, what is paradise? Well, it's a place, my grandma say, where the wicked shall cease from trouble. Yeah. And the weary shall be at rest. What is paradise? Paradise is where all of God's children will get together and go sit down at the feet of God and be blessed. Our paradise is where a place where there'll be no more death. There'll be no more sorrow. I uh, have the question that weighs on our minds tonight is, will the Lord remember me when it's my time to go? When I have crossed death's chilly sea, with his love that's show. I'm closing now, but I got a good news for you tonight. Uh, and that good news is yes. yes. He remember our feeble cries. Yes. From bondage, he set us free. And when we reach those pearly gates, I'm so glad to know that my Lord will remember me. Yes. He don't have to call me Donna. He don't have to call me Power. But he's going to remember me. What is going to call me? He's going to call me servant. Servant. And in that day, I'm going to hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come up out of paradise. And everything's going to be all right. God bless you. God keep you. He is my friend. I know you can 
the main train, please. Let us stand.
today because I found out um, that my vision wasn't as good as I thought it was. And so when I look at this thing today, if I, if I miss something, y'all know where it is. John chapter number 19, verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his, saw his mother and the disciples standing about whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to that disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple, that disciple took her into his own home. I want to talk to you today from two perspectives. Number one, I want to look at Jesus' divinity. And number two, I want to look at his humanity. Yes, but I want to talk about his humanity first. Because if you think about what was going on, Brother Kozar started off, when, when we look at this, we're so used to seeing pictures of Jesus hanging on the cross, and it looked like nothing happened to him, like he's just hanging out. Like he just has his arms stretched out, and just like he just has one leg crossed over the other. But what we forget about is that he was bruised, he was beaten, and he was unrecognizable, and so Calvary Crucifixion was a bloody place to be. It wasn't anything great for you and I to see. It was horrible. And here is Jesus during this time. He takes time out and he pauses his death because he cares so much about his mother. Yeah. And I like the way he said woman because when we look at things nowadays, we look at woman and think it was disrespectful. But during his time, woman was a sign of respect to his mother. And because he didn't want some folk to get it confused and say that Mary was the mother of God. Uh, Am I in the right place? Uh, I don't want anybody to get confused and think that Mary was the mother of God because the Bible says that he was after the order of Melchizedek who had no beginning. And so listen, listen. And so he stopped and he paused for a minute because he saw Mary there. He said, he said to the disciple whom he loved, he said, behold your mother. Come on. Anybody ever lost a parent? Anybody ever lost a child? I remember when my mother died, I thought that I wasn't going to make it. But here was a problem that I had. I had to be the priest for my family so I couldn't suffer as a son. And because I had to be the priest for my family, I had to be there for everybody and take care of everything for everybody. And then one day when I was in the shower, God said, well, who's taking care of you? And I remember that day that I broke when I thought about how much I was going to miss her. And so can you imagine, do you imagine that a parent who thinks that they're supposed to outlive their child, now you see your child hanging on the cross, but he's told you all the time that I came to do the will of my father. I didn't come here to stay. I came to do the will of my father. And I remember when I said, when I was standing in that shower, I remember Psalm number 61 hit me. And I said, hear my cry, oh God, and attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry out unto you. And when my heart is heavy, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter. Come on, anybody want God to shelter you? Don't you want God to And here was Jesus. Here was Mary. She recognized us. This boy came to do something special, but it's hard watching your child go through what he has to go through and knowing that people will still reject everything that he's done. But he looked at his mother and he said, I can't leave her like this. So he called a disciple whom he loved. And I want us to understand this right here, part of divinity was that God was saying relationships are important. Yes, sir. Can I speak to y'all right now for just two more minutes? Yes. Can I speak to you? It doesn't matter if you see CME, yes. AME, yes. Pentecostal, yes. Apostolic, Baptist, it doesn't matter where you came from. Jesus said, I died for one church. Yes. I died for one faith. I died for one baptism. And I'm the Lord over everybody. So relationships are important. And when we understand how important relationships are, we'll stop thinking that we are such a much because I attend this church and you attend that church and we're better than you over here. Jesus said, I die for all of y'all. He said, somebody 
one at this house. Now, this is around 3 o'clock. 
Uh, now pay attention to how this is going and I'm going to get out of your way. From 12 o'clock noon uh, until 3 o'clock, the sun is at its height. What you say? Don't y'all miss me on this one. The sun is at its height. Uh, now, the, the sun is at, 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 at noon is, is at the highest point that it's going to be for the day. Yeah. From that point, it starts to decline. Don't y'all miss me. Say? This is when it gets good. It says around from 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock, the, the sun starts to start to decline. Okay, and as the sun declines, we're going to go to verse 46. It says, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabah. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So this is around about 3 o'clock. Uh -huh. Now, between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock, there was something going on. Yeah. Your sins and my sins had now separated God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your sins and my sins had now created a God. The God that he that, that was created, God couldn't stand and look at his own self. Don't y'all miss this part now? Because y'all yes, know that it wasn't that God turned his back on us, he turned his back on himself. Yes, sir. Because he said he wasn't going to turn his back on. Don't y'all miss it. He said he was not going to ever turn, he was never going to leave us or forsake us. So what he did was, because our sins were on the back of Christ, he gave he imputed the righteousness of, of, of Christ and put it on us. And for three hours. For three hours, he gave Jesus the short end of the stick. Uh, I think y'all understand what I'm saying. But for three hours, Jesus caught all of our sins, yeah. all of our grief, all of our problems, all yeah. of our issues. They were on the back of yeah. on Jesus' back. What I'm trying to tell you is that on, on Jesus' back, he had literally the weight of the world yeah. on his shoulder. Uh -huh. yeah. The sun shines even in the darkness. Yeah. Now, after the darkness, now. In, in his darkness, Christ was starting to feel the weight of these sins. Mm, yeah. Christ was starting to feel my sin and your sin, the yeah. murder, the, the, the mayhem, all the mess and all the issues that we have. He was starting to feel that. Uh -huh. Jesus, Lord Jesus. And now for those three hours, he was separated from God. For those three hours, God did not want to look upon him. For those three hours, it says in the text, it said that he had forsaken me. But when we look at the Greek, it said that the Greek of forsaken said that he felt he was left in a place by himself. My God. Like God had, had literally turned his back on Jesus to cry. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. But the reason why he did this was because of our sin. Now, it said now that in this text, you would think that it says that, he, that, that God had abandoned Jesus, but I'm mean, going to stop by to tell you for a moment that he didn't abandon yes. I don't know. Not at all. Although it might have seemed like that to the outside. Yes. Yeah. But what was going on on the inside was a lot different from that. It says here that in the text it says that, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Christ felt like for the moment that God had turned his back. Yeah. Wow. But what I stopped by to tell you for a moment, that's how God feels when we turn our back. Yeah. I'm not going to be here long, so I'm just going to leave this and get out of your way. But sometimes we turn our back on God for our sin. Yes, sir. Sometimes it is us who turn our back on, on God. Yeah. But yet we look at we, we, we look at the text and we wonder how is it that this person could do this in the Bible? How could this person do that? But we do worse. Uh -huh. If not at all, we do just as bad. But yet it's easy for us to look at the text and see how I wouldn't have done this or I wouldn't have done that. But in all actuality, we've done this and worse. Oh, my God. Yeah. My God. Yeah. My God. In the text, it says that Christ made a declaration. The declaration was actually, he was quoted from Psalm 22 and 1, where, he, where David said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? But, but in, in this text, what, what, what Christ was saying, it was not that he felt abandoned. My God. But it said he was about to be delivered. Right. He realized that at, at this time, now that God was doing what he was doing behind the scenes, so now that behind the scenes was getting ready to come in front of us. In other words, what God was doing in the, in, in the back room was getting ready to come to the to the front. Jesus the Christ had made, was making a sacrifice for your sins and for my sins because God said, out of his own mouth, he said that he was going to never leave us or forsake us. So the sins that we committed, he had to lay them on the back of Christ in order that those sins would be forgiven. Yeah. So what I stopped by to tell you, my brothers and sisters, is that 
even though it looked like on the cross, it looked like it was darkness from 12 to 3. Yeah. But for the believers in Jesus to Christ, know that that was, that was the brightest time of our lives. Because no, Jesus to Christ was paying the price for all of our sins, for your sins and for my sins. So oh, now, goodness. if he died for us, we ought to have sisters. Give God another round of applause. Come on, saints of God. Come on. Come put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Lift your voice as they come. Thank you, Lord. Can y'all help me? Now that you 
will take this earthen vessel, hide it somewhere behind your cross, Lord, loose me and let me go. Lord, I pray now for preaching power. For Lord, that's the waiting congregation. Lord, my prayer is that you open their minds and their ears where they can have understanding of your word. Then, God, we ask you to just have your way in this place. We'll be so careful to give your name glory, honor, and praise. It's in your marvelous, your majestic, your mysterious name of Jesus, we pray. That every saint of God say amen, 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 and amen. If you're glad to be in the house of worship one more time, give God a hand clap of praise. privilege and a blessing just to be able to stand before you tonight and declare that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The angel of, of this house, Pastor Marvin Charles Blue, to our pulpit conductor, Pastor Amy, to all of these preachers and proclaimers of the gospel, to officers, members, visitors, and friends, it's good for us to be here. Yes, sir. It's good for us to be here. Not, not to come to hold you long at all. Brothers, just give me three minutes and we'll be out of here. John, John chapter 19, want to commence reading at verse number 28. John chapter 19, want to commence reading at verse number 28. And it reads as follows After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And God bless and keep the ears and the doors of his holy and his written word. And from that, we would like to tag this text with the title, if we need to, and just call it Athers. Athers. After, after, after this. John opens up this text with an adverb of time. He says, after this. Yes, sir. In order to understand Jesus, one must come to the realization that we serve a God that does things in decency and in order. John says, after this, every step that Jesus took while down here on earth, it was a pathway that was leading to Calvary. Yeah. John says, after this. In order to appreciate this text, you must examine the life of Jesus. When you examine the life of Jesus, it leads you to Calvary. Huh? John says in the text, after this. That was something that was prompting Jesus to say when he was getting ready to say it. Yeah. But something preceded this point. John says, after this. Yeah. It's important that we look at and consider the birth of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus was not born into this world like any other individual. Uh -huh. His father was not an earthly man. But his father was the Holy Ghost, God himself. Yeah. We have to examine the birth of Jesus, but not only do we have to examine the birth of Jesus, it's important to understand the baptism of Jesus. It's going to make sense in a minute. It's important to know that Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan. Yeah. Because the Bible said when he came up straightway out of the water, the Bible said that God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. We got to consider the birth of Jesus. We got to consider the baptism of Jesus. But then we got to also consider the blessings of Jesus. John says after this, Jesus walked this earth. He walked this earth doing good for all mankind. He healed the sick, raised the dead, unstopped death ears. He did everything right. John says after this, we look at the birth of Jesus, the baptism of Jesus, the blessing of Jesus, but then we got to consider the betrayal of Jesus. That was no doubt trifling of Jesus. He sold Jesus out in order that he might be taken by the Romans. John says after after this, you gotta consider the baptism of Jesus. You gotta consider the birth of Jesus. You gotta consider the blessings of Jesus. But then you gotta consider the betrayal. And then you get to the text and find the burden of Jesus. You, you heard these brothers talk about all that Jesus went through on Calvary Hill. We now in this text is near the end of Jesus' human life. 
He has hung on a cross for six hours now. And now him being the omniscient man that he is. Well, the text says that he knew that all things were now accomplished. Yes, sir. That the scripture might be fulfilled. And he said, I thirst. There are a lot of theological differences when it comes to this fifth cry from Calvary. Yeah. There are many recorded views that theologians and scholars wrestle with when it comes to this thing. But I got news for you tonight because God helped me as I wrestled with this text. Because I asked this text one question. Why does Jesus utter the words I thirst? Yeah. Give me about two minutes and I'll be out of your way. The, the reason that Jesus says I thirst tonight is because number one, we need to consider human logic. They, they simple points too. They, they so simple I'm embarrassed to give them to you. When Jesus says I thirst, it's important that you consider human logic. To understand this point, you've got to consider it in its proper context. It's tempting to see the pain of the cross. When we consider the nails that were nailed in the hands and the feet of Jesus. When we look at the thorn of crowns that were placed on his head. When you think of the spear that was stuck in his side. That's painful for anybody to endure. Yeah. But you've got to understand before the cross. Yeah. Jesus had experienced some terrible things. Yes. He was paraded through the streets. He was beaten by the Roman soldiers. He was spit on and called everything but a child of God. But once this procession of humiliation was finished, then were nails driven in his hands and in his feet. That is painful to make matters worse on a cross. Jesus hangs now in a position of self-suffocation. His only relief from physical pressure was to raise the weight of his body up in order for him to try to get a breath out of his body. As the hours pass, being crucified in the burning heat of the day, this action became more and more painful and difficult for Jesus. Why do you think the Romans chose this type of punishment for crimes? The cross was a means to inflict the most amount of pain possible. The reason that Jesus is thirsty is because he has endured a lot over a long period of time. That's human life. That's, in other words, that just common sense. The brother was tired. He was tired. Yeah. You must always remind yourself that we serve one that was God and man all at the same time. Yeah. And it was at this moment where his, his human side was getting the best of him. Yeah. Jesus was physically exhausted from all that he'd been through which led him to say, I thirst. Yeah. Human logic lets us know that our Lord and our Savior is experiencing dehydration. Right. Jesus yeah. is physically thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. He's thirsty. thirsty. And only because of human logic, but he's thirsty. Secondly, because of holy literature. Is in the text. If if we do not understand that Jesus was a full-blooded human, then we fully misunderstand the gospel. Jesus was not just another man. Jesus was fully human and fully divine. He was God in human flesh that dwelt among me. His presence on earth was the very nation of God. Jesus is the anointed one of God. He's an agent of God, redemption and salvation. That's why we refer to Jesus as the Messiah. Yes. That's why Peter said, thou art the Christ, art the Son of the living God. Yes. When John records this in 
the text, he says, I first. But then this joker adds on to it and says, this was to fulfill the scripture. Psalm 69 and 21 states that they gave me pause of food. And for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. This is what happened at Calvary. Yes, sir. At the declaration of Christ's thirst, the soldier raised his fun, soaked in sour vinegar to Jesus. I'm going to throw this in for free tonight because I got sense enough to know that everybody that come to church deal with Christ. Yeah. If you ain't dealing with problems today, you're going to deal with problems sometime in your life. Yeah. And not only does Jesus help us in this text with salvation, he helps us to understand how to deal with suffering. My brother and my sister, whenever you find yourself going through, rely on holy literature. They ain't nothing but the Bible. Rely on God's word. Because you are going to experience troubles, trials, and tribulations in this life. But if you focus on the holy literature, you can encourage yourself as Jesus was doing in the text. He fulfilled prophecy. Yeah. But there's promises in the word for his children. Yeah. The promises are weeping may endure for the night. But joy will come in the moment. In the text, in the text, Jesus says, I thirst. He says, I thirst. He thirsts because of human logic. He thirsts because of the holy literature. But then he said, I thirst because of his love. Jesus said, I, I thirst. The reason he said it was to strengthen him himself and to ease his throat. So that he can cry out his final words from the cross with a loud voice. He was summoning himself to bring it all to any. His love overshadowed his pain. I'm getting out of here. He, he wanted to renew our relationship with the Father. And I like it the way my granddaddy said he showed us just how much he loved us. Because the old preacher said he searched the four corners of the world and he couldn't find nobody to redeem the man. But granddaddy said, prepare me a body and I go down and redeem man. He said, I thirst. He said, I, I thirst. a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because when you're in the house of the Lord, anything can take place. Miracles can take place. Breakthroughs can take place. So we want to honor the man of God, the angel of this house, Pastor Lou. Let's make some noise and give him a big hand. This man of God is amazing. He does so much in the community. I don't even know how he does it. I, like, how he has the time. I was talking to someone other, the other day, Dr. Williams from USA Hospital. He said, Pastor Lou is working with our young people um, at Strickland and Houston. I'm like, how is this man doing all this stuff? He is everywhere. So thank you, Pastor Lou, for everything that you are doing in our community. To the brothers of the bun and the, and the brother of the gospel, it's an honor to, to share the pulpit with you. To everyone that's here, to the ministers and pastors here, it's just an honor to be in the presence. Um, let's get into this word. Let me pray, Father God. I just thank you right now, God, for, for just giving me the opportunity. I decrease, God, so you can increase more of you and less of me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I have the opportunity to bring the sixth word from the final seven words of Jesus. And it comes from John 19, the 30th verse. And it says, when Jesus therefore have received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. I'm going to say it again. It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave the ghost. And this finish is, is a Greek word. It's, it, it means telling us that and it's Greek and it means victory and completion and a, accomplishment. And I believe those are one of the most three powerful words in the Bible because it is finished. And so I had to ask myself, 
because a lot of times we read the word, but what is it? That's what we got to ask ourselves because a lot of times we're saying it is finished, but what is finished? Because if you don't know what it is finished, then you just up there talking. So you got to ask yourself, what is finished? Then the next part, you got to ask yourself, what is the victory? What do I have victory in? What do I have completion in? What do I have accomplishment in, right? See, Jesus was saying he's completed the task and mission sent by God. These two things that he was sent by God to do, rescue and redeem. Yeah. I'm going to say it again, rescue and redeem. Yeah. See, rescue means it's to save someone from a dangerous situation. See, God, see Jesus was hit, sent to rescue us. Because see, you don't understand, in Genesis, we had everything we wanted. Life was good. Yeah. We didn't have sickness. We didn't have pain. We didn't have none of this stuff going on, right? So Jesus was sent to rescue. Say rescue. rescue. So he was also sent to redeem. Say redeem. redeem. See, redeem means the gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. You don't hear me right now. Yeah. So exchange for payment. See, Jesus paid our debt. Our debt. And that debt was sin. And see, a lot of people don't understand what sin did. See, when, when Eve made that decision, and see, this is the crazy thing about it, and it's going, and I know I only have 10 minutes, but see, people don't even understand that Eve name wasn't even Eve. We didn't even see Eve name change till she ate from the tree. Because that's how one they was. People don't even see that. We even see the transition. So when they ate from the tree, that's when sin came into this world. And when sin came, and now we see what we see right now. But when Jesus came on the scene, he paid that debt. And now I sit back and I look at our life. Imagine right now your life. I don't know how many of y'all went to school, but you got student loans on there. You ever went to school? But man, imagine right now somebody come and say, it's paid off. But this is the crazy part. Imagine this. Imagine if you still go and pay the bill. Imagine if you still pay the bill. And the problem is that's what a lot of us still do. We still, God has said, I already paid it off. Why you still crying about it?
is just walking in what God has already done. That's it. That's all we do. We all, oh, I gotta work and do this. No, you walk in it. And guess what? Did, what, what did he do? He spoke. He spoke. That's how this earth was created. He spoke. And as believers, we gotta do the same thing. When he said it's finished, we gotta believe it. We gotta believe that it's done and it's, it's finished. Let me hear you say it's finished. It's finished. Whatever you think right now, I want you to think about something in your life right now. Whatever it is that you desire right now, whatever you believe in it for, I want you to say it's finished. It's finished. Whatever you believe in your community right now, whatever you believe in to see in your community, I want you to say it's finished. It's finished. Whatever now, I want you to say it is finished. Yeah. Whatever you want to see in your home right now, I want you to say it is finished. It is finished. Because Jesus did it. Thank you. Come on, give it up for the Lord one more time. Come on, saints of God. Come on, saints of God. Let us stand one more time as the preach man and the set man of this house. Come on. Just a couple.
couple of housekeeping things before we close this evening out. I want to thank God. I want to thank God. I want to thank God for these proclaimers tonight. Come on, can you help me give God praise? Pastor Michael Cozart of the Corn of Cornerstone Ministries. Uh, Pastor Donnie Powell. Junior of Living Baptist Church, right. Bishop Anthony Petway of Eastgate Bible Church, Reverend R. T. Smith, coming from Little St. Louis Street Baptist Church, right. Reverend Kendall Young, on home from us from Franklin Street Baptist Church, and Minister Corey Penn from Right Way Christian Center. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. And let's give God praise. I learned this phrase when I moved here, Arif. They, they call the liturgist or the worship leader the pulpit conductor. Yeah. So the pulpit conductor tonight was none other than our brother, Pastor Tim Amy of the Greater Pine Grove Missionary Baptist Church across the bay. Amen. Hallelujah to the hands of God. I want to thank Brother Stanley Arnold for joining us in our music ministry. Praise God. Praise God. Would all the men of Cap out the side please stand real quick? We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We praise God. We praise God for you all tonight. I see uh, my brother and my sister all the way from New Hope who always give me hope when they step up in the room. Can we thank God for the Brooks tonight? Amen. <laughs> now, Ed the Brooks, the only reason why you're not up here tonight is because we haven't put your jacket on yet. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that somebody's preaching. Amen. Yes, and before I leave here, before I leave here, he's going to stand here. Amen. Because I love him. I thank God for him. And I appreciate the brotherhood. And we already know that T can sing. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I see um, Pastor Reed Bradley tiptoeing. All right. Okay. He's going to his other place. All right. Pastor Reed Bradley from the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church. Let's give God praise for him. And then the presiding elder of the Mobile District of the AME Zion Church and the pastor of Big Zion AME Zion Church and the joker who preached a silly today at 12 noon along with Pastor Bradley. Come on, let's give it up for Reverend Dr. Thomas Turner. I know the thorn is itching a little bit because all this crimson is making her maybe possibly rethink his choice. So we're going to put on a little bit more pressure. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, in your own way, make sure you encourage these young men. If the Lord moves, on to, moves your heart to bless them in a mighty way, go right ahead. But I just want to thank you on the bond, my brothers for all that you did tonight. Amen. Let's get ready to go home. Luke chapter number 23 verse number 44 it reads on this wise it was about 12 noon and darkness came over the whole land to the afternoon for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Yes, sir. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The, the centurion, seeing what had happened to him, praised God and said, Surely this must have been the Son of God. Jesus said with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands 
I commit my spirit. And from the book of Teddy, Pentecost, if you will, looking back over my years, I guess I've shed some tears. Told myself time and time again, this time I'm gonna win. But another fight, things ain't right. I'm losing again. Takes a fool to lose twice and start all over again. So tonight I want to share with you, I think I better let it go. I think I better let it go. I think I better let it go. So, 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 so here we are at word seven. Here we are with the final statement of this three hour episode. Here we are, the credits are starting to roll because all of the scenes have been played out. Yeah. Here, here, here we are looking at this man from Galilee who has gone on this three and a half year crusade and campaign to let the world know that he, the Messiah, was really real. Yeah. We, 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 we're now at the end of this, of this, of this three year season. And the cliffhanger is him hanging on this old rugged cross. We, we've seen the episode where he turned water into wine. We, we caught the episode where he told Nazareth to come forth. Y'all do remember the episode that was a two-parter because in the first part, the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, but we had to come back for the second half to see him tell Jairus' daughter to let the Yacoub, little girl, get up. We, 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 we've seen him walk on water and then calm the raging sea by saying, peace, be still. We, 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 we've seen him call his disciples and tell them, I'm going to make you fishers of men. But now on this cliffhanger episode, the, 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 the moment has come where the scene is called cut and the drapes are falling on the stage. But before we can call cut, the director has to go back over the script to make sure every line has been read. And can I let somebody in on a little secret? The reason why some of us are stuck at the conclusion is because we've gone, we failed to go back to make sure everybody has said their part on the script. He, he, he said, Father, forgive them, check. He said, today you shall be with me in paradise, check. He said, woman, behold your son, check. He said, Father, while well, he has said, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me, check. He said, I thirst, check. He said, it's finished, check. And now he's saying, into thy hands I commit my spirit because every time I check something off, I completed a task. Task number one, I forgave those who didn't understand what was going on. Task number two, I remembered a sinner man who was on his last hope. Task number three, I took care of mama and made sure my best friend had her covered. Task number four, I got real with my situation because I tried to figure out why am I having to deal with all of this. Task number five, I had to deal with my reality because all of this is draining me. Task number six, after I scratched my head, I was now able to say it is finished. So task number seven, I can turn it over to your hand. And I need somebody in here to realize that when you understand the purpose of your task, it makes it a little easier to say, now into your hands, I commit my spirit. I need 
somebody in here to realize tonight that many of us are holding on to stuff because we've not completed our checklist. We're still holding on to some hatred. We still don't have an inclusive mentality. We still are all about me, myself, and I. We still think we've done no wrong. We still think that man of shepherds and that mad dog 2020 is going to take care of it all. We think we still have time left. Can I let you in on a little secret? Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth a move can stand, but Unchanging. So, 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 so here, here, here. He's completed the task. He's understood the assignment. But here's the good news of the text. At this time, his hands were no good. Titus, at this time, his hands are no good. His hands have holes in them. His hands have aches in them. His hands are now scrunched and chucked of life because the blood has come streaming down. That same blood that saved me was killing him. So he has no strength in his hands, but I guess he remembered they were going to teach us in vacation Bible school. God's got the whole wide world in his hands. So watch this. Because my hands are weak, because my hands are feeble, I need to turn it over to somebody who's able to handle it. In my hands, I can bounce a basketball like this. But in Steph Curry's hands, I can hit three pointers from here to USA. In my hands, I can throw a football possibly to the back of this building. But in Jalen Hurts' hands, I can throw touchdown after touchdown. A Super Bowl. In my hands, I'm able to be able to pick a little bit on a piano. But in Stevie Wonder's hands, I can make Grammy Award winning music. In my hands, a peanut is just a snack. But in George Washington Carver's hands, a peanut is nothing yes than a marble of modern medicine. In my hands, a baseball bat may get you a strikeout. But in Hank Aaron's hands, it'll get you 755 home runs. I need you to know tonight when you put it in the right hands, right things turn out in your favor. Do I have a witness here who can turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've done the text. I've checked my checklist. I've understood the assignment. And now I'm ready to turn it over into better hands, hands that can heal me, hands that can restore me, hands that can make a way for me. Do I have a witness here who's glad your life is in God's hands? Feel like breaking some rules tonight, but I'm gonna hold my peace and wait to two more days. I'm gonna wait and let you find out at Cornerstone. I'm gonna wait and let you find out at New Hope. I'm gonna wait and let you find out at Lily. And let you find out a big Zion. I'm gonna wait and let you find out a planet Rome. But if you need a sneak for a review, 
rerun real quick. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. They hung him high and stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. I'll pause right there because I want a woman ruin the ending for anybody. But I can't leave you right there. Can I just tell y'all one more thing? Be not dismayed. Whatever the time, God will. God will. God will. Take care of you. Do I? For your healing, here's my misery. For your joy, here's my sadness. For your happiness, because I know in your hands everything, everything, everything. Since I'm home, I might as well. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way? Won't he do it? Won't he hold your hand and say, Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say, yeah! Yeah! Ah, yes!
put things in your hands, oh Father God. Lord, we thank you now, Lord, as we leave this place on tonight. We ask that you will grant us your traveling grace. And when we return to our destination, that we may find everything well, oh Father God. Lord, we ask that you keep us, oh Father God, that we may go into the house of worship on Sunday morning. Yes. To find out the ending of the story, oh Father God. And I'm so glad it didn't end with you just hanging on the cross, oh Father God. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest rule and abide with us now and forevermore. Let us all sing. picture real quick for our reference. So come on down. 